Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome back to my odd little channel. I realize this is somewhat of a strange place. If you've sifted through the videos, you've seen videos. I'm making Tesla coils and electronics and a little bit of video poetry I tried to do recently. You know, I, I realize I run the risk in trying to do something for everybody. I can wind up doing a lot of things for nobody. So I do appreciate your patronage. Really, really do. Appreciate those thumbs ups and the uh, and those of you who have sub subscribed and I hope I won't let you down. If you don't like this video, uh, maybe the next one will have something pretty cool because I like a lot of different things and I like videoing a lot of different things. Today I'm going to build this kit. Um, this comes from the Tindy website, T-I-N-D-E website, uh, where folks who design cool things put them up for sale, mostly electronic things. And uh, today I'm going to build this this here MSP430 Nixie Clock kit from Rob G. And uh, it's a through-hole kit, so basically all you do is you plug the parts in the right spots and you solder them. And there's not a whole lot of brain power necessary, but I don't really, you know, I'm not really into designing something from scratch today. And this kit looks really cool, and I really like Nixie Clocks. Um, at the end of the day, this board will generate 180 volts from a little 12 volt power supply. That should be kind of fun to watch. I'm gonna experiment now. I'm gonna use this device here. This is a microscope I got. And I'm gonna try my best to video using this thing. And um, there's a camera attached to it. And that uh, fan you hear in the background is some of the video software running. So we're gonna try to do a little video here of me soldering stuff onto this board and if it gets too boring I'll put some music on it. Thanks again for watching and let's see how this goes. Take two. Now Rob has got his instructions online and as is true with most of these kits you get a very nice circuit board and he's done a really good job of, of having this silk screen. He's got uh, images of the parts even on back he's got warnings for high voltage. This thing is going to generate uh, 180 volts when you're done at a very simple 12 volts. So that's kind of cool. Um, the first thing we usually do in these kits is put the resistors on uh, because they're the simplest thing to do. They're low profile to get out of the way. And so what we have to do is find the 470K resistors. And typically what happens is when the resistors come, if they're, if they're taped up like this together, usually resistors of the same value will be taped up together. They won't put different ones. So if we find the, the value of one, we'll find the value of all of them. And let's take a look and what these are right here. I'm take some of these resistors and continue putting them on the board where Rob says we should put them. So we can presume that they're all 470 ohm, 470k. Oh, let's take a look here. Let's begin to verify yellow or purple 70 is, is black. And then that is actually an orange is red is uh, 10 to the 3. So that's 470 ohms, 470 K ohms. So let's uh, bend that down there like that. And I'm just going to bend them very close to the edge. Step and repeat. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to populate this. The other words for what we're doing here is called board stuffing. We're basically just taking. Uh, okay, so just taking the right part and shoving it in the right hole. There's not a whole lot of thought that is required other than to make sure the part you're shoving in the hole is the right one and that your soldering technique is decent.
that next time I go forward to do something like this, I'm going to do it with a board that isn't black. It just doesn't show up very well. I mean, I can see it just fine, but I'm pretty sure you can't. Uh, so we'll, we'll go blast through here. I'm just trying to cut, cut off the resistor leads that... Wow, it's even hard to see in the microscope. Interesting. Figures, as soon as I get everything on camera, everything gets confused. I was just chooching along really nicely. And now, not so nicely. looks like them. I'm not too pleased with the way the solder balls come out, but. Okay, there's the 470K resistors put in. There's the solder on the back. Let's get a uh, camera view of this here. They kind of show up, they don't show up so well, these, these little solder balls here. They, what I had to do is go over each one, and I'll give you an example. I had to go over each one after it was cut and just touch it up because I really didn't like the way the connections looked with this solder, you know, and this is this lead free stuff. You see how. It gets a little nice and nicer and shiny. There's one that looks kind of like this one looks kind of terrible. Let's well, sometimes just heating them up does it. It's, still kind of looks bad, but I think that's just the reflection. And yeah, these two don't look so so peachy, do they? Okay, so Rob's kit now calls for uh, four. Let's see, we got four resistors on top, four on the bottom, four 10K resistors on top, four 1K resistors on the bottom, and another 1K goes down here. Uh, let's take a look at the scope here. So here we have, let's, it's kind of hard to see color on this thing. I apologize, I'll have to do an adjustment. So we have brown, which is a one, black is a zero. One, zero, zero times 10 to the two, red is a two. So 10 to the 2 is 100. So this is 100 times 100. So these are your 10K resistors. I'm going to go over here. And we have, actually it goes this way. How did I know that? Well, I'll tell you in a second. Um, so we have brown, which is 1. 0, 0, which is 100, times 10 to the 1, which is a, uh, a 10. So. 100 times 10 is a thousand. This is your 1K resistor. Now I had it backwards. I had it like that. Now how did I know that was backwards? Well, let's see if I had it. If I started counting it this way, right? I would be looking at. Now another thing to do when you've got these resistors and you're not quite sure of the color code and you don't know if you got it right is to take out your trusty fluke meter and measure them. So I'm just Luke in this guy here just for the sake of grins and let's see if you can see that uh, so that's telling me we're at nine 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 six seven K that's close enough to 10 K for me so that means that these guys here 
those are your 10k resistors because um, sometimes it's hard to see in the in the light whether you got a red or a yellow or not red or yellow you usually can tell a red and yellow but red or an orange usually kind of hard to tell apart all right all right now we're gonna do the same thing with the one we're gonna do the same thing with the 1k resistors these guys right there and they go in these holes right here so they go right there That's what I get for trying to solder and talk to people at the same time. Eh, I don't like that. I imagine my dentist has the same sort of feeling about thing. Luckily, my dentist doesn't have to solder on camera. All right, I don't know if you saw what what I'm worried about is that uh, when I I accidentally soldered this guy to that guy and I just yanked him up and there was a there was a pop. And what I'm afraid of is that the solder pad get pulled off. Although they're plated holes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna test that with the uh, with the fluke meter to see if there's still continuity there, and then I didn't wreck it. All right, let me explain. Let me explain what I did here. I was worried that on the board I had yanked off a pad on one of these 1K resistors. So what I did was I came back to the schematic here, and what we see is these 1K resistors go from the emitter. To the, of these drivers, um, and as you see, this is a one transistor going into another transistor that forms a high impedance driver. So uh, with a high gain. So what we're doing here is we got this 1K resistor, this load resistor that's going to ground. So one end is ground, the other end goes to the emitter. So what I did was I got the board. Hopefully you guys can see that. Got the board at the bad spot and I tested it between ground the ground pin and the emitter the one pin to ground one pin to the emitter and I saw that I still had continuity so uh, I know that it's uh, it's right even though it looked bad now this whole time I've more or less been presuming you guys know how to solder maybe you don't um, little example here I take the iron and I actually uh, clean it off on a piece of um, brass wool which I'll show in a different shot see it's cleaned off and now I put a little solder on the tip and then we heat the element and we apply the solder oh that didn't work all right there we go the solder doesn't stick it's usually because you're not hot enough where you're supposed to go generally you want this to take no longer than three seconds see one thousand two one thousand three one thousand oh, see it makes me a liar right there there we go now the whole time i've been doing this i've been referring back to rob's diagrams this came uh, on the tindy website this is his his uh his instruction set and i've been looking at all of the uh, oops, all the resistors, where the resistors go. I've been, uh, you know, following this diagram assiduously. And when I, I get confused, I bring up his schematic, and the schematic tells me what wire is supposed to connect to what part. And so, if I get confused about something, I can refer back to the schematic. And this is my soldering station. It's a. Uh, I'm using a Weller. Uh, it's a fast heat tip and after I use it I plunge it in there clean off the tip and then when you put it on that it cools down right away it's a fancy soldering iron you don't need anything quite that fancy to do all this work but it makes it a lot easier okay, now I'm just gonna clean off the work area we've got all the resistors on there get all this stray stuff off now we're going to add these diodes for no other reason than they're right in front of me. The diodes are a little interesting because they have a direction. It does matter which way you put them in. And let's go over to the microscope now. 
Okay, there are two diodes on Rob's board. And one goes here. And one goes up here. See that? Now, according to his diagram, the one that goes up here is a type BAV21. The one that goes down here is your classic 1N914. Now here are the two diodes. How are you going to tell them apart? Well, first of all, if you're out of focus, you're not going to be able to tell a bunch of anything. And are you going to need a magnifying glass for this yourself? Um, you might. Now, I've used a lot of diodes in my life, and from a distance, with my bad eyes, this sure looks like a 1N914. But you know what? As we move it around here, let's see if I can get that to focus. Sure as heck looks like, let's see, sure as if, heck looks like as I rotate this, that looks like a number. And it looks like the number 21. And if I turn it a little further this way, that looks like a B and an A. I know it looks like a blob. And that's just an artifact of, maybe I could shade it a little bit. No. You're going to have to trust me. That's a B and that's an A. And that's a 21. So I know this is the BAV21. And by process of elimination, this makes this the 1N914. Now... I've seen a lot of 1N914s in my life, and this don't look like one. So maybe this is something else from the kit. Let's take a look in the parts and see if there's something else. So I've gone through all the parts in the bag, and I've only found these two diodes. And even though that looks like a 1N914, that sure looks like a number 21 to me. So I'm going to say this is the BAV21, and this is the 1N914, and we're going to install them that way. So let's pull the leads off. Now you might say, how are you going to know which end is which? Because diodes do have an end. This black line on this side, I believe, is the cathode. So I'm going to bend that guy like that. And I'm going to take the board, and the BAV21 goes there. And I believe that the, I'm going to match that stripe up that way. And hopefully the gods of electronics are with me. I've done this right. Kind of hard. Right, let's get it back in focus. There's no, there is no depth of field on this camera whatsoever. It's a microscope camera. So I'm going to line up that stripe right there with the stripe on the board. And I'm going to pray that I have done the right thing. And when I look at uh, I look at the picture that Rob sent, that sure looks the same. looks Looks like that's the way to do it, like that. And that means that this guy, there's the stripe on this left-hand side. Take the paper off the ends. Now this one is going to take a little bit more creative bending because it's a little bit smaller. And the stripe, which is downward is going to go down in the hole here. Now these here are diodes and that means little silicon devices. The, the uh, resistors are made of carbon. Heating up the carbon doesn't do too much. As you know if you heat up carbon, when you heat up wood it turns into carbon and not much happens after that. Uh, with these little silicon devices, if we heat them too much they will fry. So what we want to do is get the tip nice and tinned and get the, just like that. You see, it's actually easier for me to do it than to talk while doing it. Let's, let's get the other side of that one. I don't want to mess around here like I do with the diodes, all right? Here we go. One, two, three, and we're done. We don't want to let the iron stay on there for much longer than that because otherwise you'll fry the diode and then you'll wind up with nothing working. And uh, done. 
So Rob has got us using these, uh, here we go, let's get it in camera, 10 microfarad electrolytic, rated at 250 volts. That's nice because the circuit's going to run at 180, so uh, 250, you got some headroom there. How do, can you tell which lead is which? These guys are polarized. There is a plus and a minus. Clearly, this is a minus sign. Or you may not know that, but that's a minus sign. And when you look at it, one lead is longer than the other. The plus lead is longer than the minus lead. So we're going to put those onto the board. And they go on the board right here. All right. Okay, so we've got these caps on the board, nice and flush. And we're going to bend the leads so that they don't jiggle. And they're not going to jiggle after we solder them. So let's do that right away. And there is really not any much different technique. Uh, these don't aren't quite as temperature sensitive, but they still are. So we don't want to leave the heat on there for too long. And let's, we'll call that a day. Now another thing you can do is this. Solder one lead on, like I just did. And then put your finger on the part on the other side and press it in tightly. And just heat up that, just heat up the one junction there. And you'll notice it'll snap into place more tightly than it, than it had been. Let's do it for the other one that I soldered in there. And I don't know if you can see this on this little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger on that. I'm going to press it in. And I'm just going to warm up the leads. And they'll, they'll just nudge into place. Okay, now we have three more of these electrolytics. And they're all the same capacitance. Um, if you take a look there. You'll notice that they're all 220 uh, microfarads, uh, but they're a different size. This, this guy on the end is decidedly smaller than these two. And why is that? Because these are rated at 25 volts. And if we, uh, let's see, see, 25 volts. And this guy is only rated at 16 volts. Now, what you don't want to do is mix up the 25 volt ones with the 16, even though they're both, they're all 220 microfarads. If you put them in the wrong spots, chances are this little guy is not going to like seeing whatever voltage you're seeing, and it's going to pop on you at some point. So we need to make sure we put them in the right spots. And Okay, so we got Mr. 16 volt in his place down here, and the holes are actually even further apart for the... Uh, the larger uh, voltage rated ones. Remember, put the long hole in, long lead in the plus, short lead in the minus, and just so that you don't forget there's a big minus sign there. So that. There's just no depth of focus on this thing, and uh, I guess that's because it's meant to be imaging. Uh, little guys on a petri dish that have no thickness and not for soldering circuit boards there must be one with a greater depth of focus for the circuit board if I can just find that if anybody knows what it is let me know oh. and, uh, now let's see here shiny Looks like I got a little bit of a dinger left over there. And by the way, you want to use these angle cutters, right? Yeah, I'm presuming you all got these angle cutters. All right, now we're going to talk about something that has confounded electrical engineers since the beginning of time, and that is what is the capacitor code. It really isn't that complicated, but you got to know how to do your exponents. Capacitor, these capacitors are rated in terms of picofarads, basically. Whereas these big guys are rated in terms of microfarads. You see where it says 10 UF, that U is a, uh, uh, a Greek symbol, and it means micro. Microfarad is, one microfarad is a millionth of a farad, 
A picofarad is a trillionth of a farad. Okay, let's forget about trillionth and millionth. Uh, microfarad is 10 to the minus 6. Picofarad is 10 to the minus 12. What this is saying is we have 22 picofarads times 10 to the 2, which is 100. So this is 2,200 picofarads, which is the same as 2.2 nanofarads. So 2,200 times 10 to the minus 12 is the same as 2.2 times 10 to the minus 9. If you don't believe me, get your calculator and try it. Up here, we've got a 103. So we have 10 picofarads times 10 to the 3, which is 1,000. That's 10 thousand picofarads. 1,000 picofarads is a nanofarad, so it's 10 nanofarads. And over here, we have 10 picofarads times 10 to the fourth, which is 10,000. This is a 100,000 uh, picofarads, which is 100 nanofarads. Same thing as well as 0.1 microfarad. And you know, doing all this in your head is can make your brain explode. I've been doing it for longer than I care to admit. But let's go back to Rob's uh, diagram. I should also mention that these uh, little yellow ceramic capacitors are unpolarized, so it wouldn't matter if you put them in this way or if you flip them around this way and put them in. wouldn't matter, unlike the diodes where it does matter. Now we're going to put in, and I've got them all soldered into place there off camera, and now we're going to put in the crystal. Now the crystal, this is what's going to run the microprocessor and give us a correct time. And this, I believe, is also unpolarized. Pretty darn sure it's unpolarized. And what you want to do with the crystal is you want to get it in its holes, but then you want to fold it back onto this pad here. That's why he's got a pad there. This goes get it in a little further a little further and then we want him to fold back onto that pad so let's get him soldered in first and this guy is marginally sensitive so we don't want the heat on there for too long all right, and now what we are going to do is, now what we're going to do is we're going to solder him onto that pad. So the first thing, so the first thing I did here was separate all the A42s from the 92s. And then there are these two N3906s. And I think they're both 3906s. Yes, they are. Even though that one's got a little spot there. Um, all right, so you have three types of transistors here, and we don't... All right, so for nothing for nothing, let's put the rarest ones in first. All right, so this is the this is the 2N3906. And I believe so is this one and you'll notice that sometimes using a tweezer for these parts really does help and sometimes it drives you crazy all right so there's a 3906 all right so those guys go in these holes down at the bottom of the board so we're putting them in there and here now what you'll notice is there's a shape silk screen on the board there's a flat side and a rounded side. We're going to match that up with the device. So I'm going to take this device and I'm going to try to do this on camera. I have never done this on camera before. And I'm going to one, two, oops. Some would have helped if I had uh, spread the leads apart first but what I'm going to do is press that guy in there and what you see is that the shape of the case let's see, you see it's got a round back and a flat front it follows the silk screen and then ever so gently bend the leads a little bit on the back and now we're going to solder the bad boy in 
you got to be careful with transistors because with transistors, if you heat them too much, if you leave this, uh, you'll, if you leave the iron on them too long, you will destroy them for no particular reason. I'm soldering the middle one first, and then the two ends. There we go. Let's see if you can see that. Very difficult to see in this light. Oh, there we go. And now we'll get the one at the end here. All right, we're just going to finish soldering all these bad boys in here. One of the things that may be worth mentioning, I mean, I've been doing a lot of this off camera because it's just tedium, is, all right, I'm going to, uh, instead of soldering in one transistor at a time in order to preserve the heat or to prevent any of these things from heating up excessively, I'll just run down and solder one lead of each transistor at a time. So, you know, now that first one is cooling off while I do the second one here. And so when things like that happen, I'm not sitting with the iron right on it. There we go. And now for the last one. Gonna touch up some of these that don't look so good. And I think that's about I think that's about it. So now we have two devices that look very much the same but are couldn't be more radically different. This one here is an IRF, can you see IRF seven forty? And this one over here is an LM 111-3.3. This guy is a 3.3 volt voltage regulator that they're using to drive some of the ICs that have the logic in it. So the the thing that's actually running the clock, etc. This is a high voltage transistor that he's using to generate the 180 volts uh, for the uh, for the Nixie display. If you mix these up, nothing good is going to happen. So make sure you... Now the way they go in here, as you see, uh, you've got the three holes closed together, and then you've got this, this thick white part. The thick white part corresponds to the, to the heat sink here. So, and then there's also a dot, which signifies pin number one. And I don't know if this thing has got a dot on it or anything. Probably not. You'd probably have to look at the data sheet to figure it out. But we know that that we put it in this way. He's made a really nice uh, circuit board here, and it's very difficult to make a mistake when you're when you're doing this. You know, again, they've got machines that do this. Uh, you know, we tend to like soldering, I guess, which is why we like doing these kits. But um, if you were going to mass produce this, you would never never solder this yourself. You would uh, you'd have a machine do it for you. Um, a board stuffer would populate the board, and then you'd wave solder it. The whole thing would be put together in a matter of uh, moments. All right, where are we? Here, we're here. Now, because these have a big heat sink on them, they tend to take a little more heat. This one. There we go. 
Now you can see when the, when, the, when the pad gets hot enough, the solder wets it. Before that time, the solder won't stick to it. You, you'll, you just notice a point where the solder will suddenly start flowing. See, it's not flowing, it's not flowing, it's not flowing. It's, there it goes. Of course, now i got the thing stuck on there. All right. Okay, this here is an inductor. It's a coil. Uh, 221 Henry, 221 micro Henry coil. And uh, this, when you see a coil like this, and a bunch of capacitors like these big guys, and a big switching transistor like this, you know that what's happening is you've got a switching power supply. And uh, actually it doesn't, as far as this coil goes, it doesn't matter which way we put it in. We can put it in either way. It'll be fine. But uh, what's happening is the, um, the coil and the transistor is acting like a spring. And if you imagine the diode, and there's a diode right here. So you've got a coil, you've got the two caps, you've got a switching transistor, and you've got a diode. A diode's like a one-way valve, and the coil and the capacitors make a spring. So you have this thing bouncing back and forth like a little pump, pumping energy into the into those capacitors, or pumping current into those capacitors, and as the capacitors get charged up, the voltage increases, and uh, the, uh, the diode acts as a one-way valve that lets the current go in, but not out. And that's how, uh, that's how it charges up, and that's how it switches the cars. All right, so now we've got, now we've got the uh, transistors, resistors, the caps, it's time to put on the uh, ICs, I think. Yeah, Rob has provided us with some IC sockets, which will solder onto the board. That prevents us from having to solder the integrated circuits themselves directly to the board and potentially damage them. And one of these is a uh, little processor. There it is, a little MSP processor, Texas Instruments logo there, and he's pre-programmed that. So we solder it in, we could wind up with a uh, uh, with a broken program and nothing will work. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these these little holders. We'll solder those in. Then we'll now here's the trick with these IC holders. You generally don't screw around with the leads. They're very bendy and if you bend them, you're going to have a hard time dropping it in. So you drop them into the hole like I drop that one in and then turn it around the back and just bend one of the leads and then what we're going to do is we're going to solder just one of the leads on doesn't matter which one just as long as we get one of them soldered on there let's go for this guy and because this is a holder it's not really that sensitive to uh heat and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing I did with those capacitors I'm going to press down there and then I'm going to go back to this lead that I soldered right there and I'm just going to apply some heat and let it press down there we go hopefully don't burn our fingers this another read and now I'm going to do the same thing so I soldered this one up front here I'm going to do the same thing for the lead all the way in the back on the opposite side Solder that one down, then press it in. I'm pressing it in from the other side. And I'm going to hold it in while I just liquefy that. And there you go. Now that thing is flush to the board. And we can go hog wild and solder the rest of these. Because we know it's flush. One of the other nice things about these th about these holders is, uh, and generally with ICs, you're not ever going to be clipping off uh, the leads like you do with the capacitors and the inductors and the transistors. You don't have these li you don't so you don't clip these things down. You solder them in, and they stay exactly the way they are. Okay, we got the DC jack here, and Rob says we should put it on the back of the board in those three holes. Now, this is an interesting thing because 
I've got to be able to hold that down. I've got to be able to hold the DC jack on there somehow. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rest it. I'm going to rest it on that. The handle of the... Uh, Let's see if I can get, is there any possibility of a better focus. There we go. All right, now we're going to have to glom some solder in there and really get. Normally, I would raise the heat of the soldering iron to do this, but in this case, I'm just going to go with it like this. And we're just going to put a big glob there to cover up that hole, like so. And then. Now it's on there, so now we can take it off the wrench and do these other sides. Okay, so I'm going to mount my Nixie tubes, my LEDs for the Nixie tubes on the back of the Nixie tubes itself. So. Here's an LED, and one thing to notice about the LED is that one, if you look at the two leads, there's a flat side. That side's flat, and that's the negative. The longer one is the positive. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in this hole. downward roughly at about a quarter inch and you can see perhaps you can see in profile what we're doing bending them down and And now here's the fun part. So here's the Nixie tubes themselves. Interesting how we can tell which way is up and which way is down. I'm seeing numbers in there. I could probably look, figure it out from whether, is this, is this the top and that's the bottom? Uh, I think it goes this way. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of these pins on each end and solder the pins in. So we've got these pins which can go on to the end of the Nixie tubes and then the pins will get soldered in. So here we've taken a whole slew of these individual pins and we put them on the back of the Nixie tube itself now. I'm going to guess, and it's just a guess. I'm look, trying to make out the numbers in there, but I think this way, I think up is in this direction. So we'll place this in the board if we can. And now I see why they have you put the pins on the tube first so that you can... Move it around and get it. There we go. And now all the pins are in. Turn around the back. Let's get it again. And there are all the pins. And now we're going to solder each one. Notice the tube itself is not being soldered. The tube is not being soldered. Just these pins. And in fact, after we finish soldering this in, we can um, we can take the tube out so that it's safe.
Okay, there's one. So luckily for us, there are three integrated circuits and they're each a different size. So there's going to be no ambiguity as to where anything goes. So this eight pin device I have right here and we will line up the little U, the little U. Now what I've found is usually a good thing to do before you try to plug one of these things in because the pins tend to be bowed outward, except in this case they're not bowed outward and they're actually pretty straight. Sometimes what you want to do is just lean it against a table and press it a little bit. This way when you pop it in to the holder you don't get any bent pins and so let's just put it on top there we'll just look at it make sure the pins do all appear to be heading in because sometimes what will happen is you'll press in one of these circuits and the pins will bend and they will not be all right so that looks good let's take a look at this side hard to see around all the and all the pieces but it, it yeah there it is and it's not in focus but if we yeah I think we can pretty much tell they're all in all right let's try the next one so this one as you can see the leads are bent outward and that's the way they usually are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it against the table here. It's a non-conductive table. It's wood. And I'm just going to just going to bend it inward a little bit. And then the same on this side. I'm going to bend it inward a little bit. So that basically they're more or less straight. Now we'll line up the 16-pin connector with a little U here, with a little U there. Let's just drop it on top and make sure. Oops. Let's just make sure the pins appear to be lining up and they do not appear to be lining up there. How about like that? Yep, looks good there. Looks good there. All right, let's just try pushing it straight in. Straight in, and it does not look like any of our pins bent. So good, so now that one's in. And the last one is this guy here. We'll take a look. His pins are bowed out a little bit. All right, so we'll put it against the table. But just bend it inward a little bit. Same on this side. There we go. And there it is. That looks good. We didn't bend any pins under. And here's the final result working. And I can set the time. I gotta. I don't remember, know how his uh, buttons work here. I'm gonna have to read the instructions. And each one of these buttons does something specific. And. Uh, but right now you can see the LEDs are working and the clock is working and we've got a thumbs up. And I just thought it might be interesting to look at these uh, Nixie tubes from a closer vantage point.